Hi, my name is Jason from Sow the Land. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to raise your own meat chickens in your own backyard. And this video is a collaboration video uh, with Homesteaders of America Conference. I'll leave a link down to their YouTube channel down below and also a playlist of all the other awesome homesteading YouTubers who are a part of this collaboration. Okay, let's talk about the different breeds of meat chickens. Now I like to say meat chickens. I just don't want to confuse everyone that we have egg layers and we have meat chickens. Meat chickens are specifically bred for meat. There's different varieties of meat chickens, but two of the common ones are Cornish crosses. The Cornish crosses are probably the more popular meat bird to raise because they are fast growing. These meat birds typically take about eight weeks to grow out before you butcher them. And they're also the typical breed that you would see at the grocery store, already nicely packaged. And the Cornish crosses are more of a white breasted chicken. The next typical meat breed of chicken is your Freedom Ranger. Or also known as a Red Ranger type bird. And these are like kind of a reddish color. They're more of a heritage breed bird, meaning they're a little bit more slower growing than the Cornish Crosses. Now the Red Ranger type bird is more of a dark meat. The Cornish Crosses take eight weeks. The Freedom Rangers or Red Rangers take about 12 weeks to grow out before you butcher them. And so which ones should you pick? <laughs> okay, so these are the Cornish Crosses and Freedom Rangers. I feel it's really a personal preference. I would try, try it all. You know, I encourage you to just try it and see for yourself which one you like better. The main reason I think people like the Cornish Crosses is because they're fast growing. Eight weeks, you have about a four or five pound bird uh, on your dinner table. But also you have to worry about they have a little bit more genetic problems such as some leg problems. If you feed them too much, they can have heart attacks. Um, I have not experienced that myself, but it happens. And the Freedom Rangers are a little bit more hardy. If you don't mind the 12 week grow out, um, the Freedom Rangers are a really great option uh, to raise. But this year we're getting our meat chickens from McMurray Hatchery. But it's really just you go online type in what quantities you want and they come in the mail. The post office calls you and says, hey, your meat chickens are ready. You go down to the post office and pick them up in a box. All right, Penelope, we need to put them in a, get them some water. We need to introduce them to the other chickies. Close the door. Sometimes you might lose one or two in the mail in that mailing process. And that's just, that's just what happens. And so usually they'll send out a couple extra. But in this case, we have 29 of them. On the Cornish crosses that we got yesterday, we have 33 of those. So I think it'll all work out. If this is your first time doing meat chickens, I would start with doing 25. Because really 25 is really not that much different to raise than doing five of them. Uh, it's pretty much the same process. It's a little bit more extra feed, but it's pretty much the same so you might as well do the 25 and get that going okay now you just purchased your meat chickens you went to the post office picked them up in the mail you brought them home then now what if you raised egg layers before you treat them pretty much the same as the egg layers these baby chicks are about a couple days old if you have nowhere to put them you can just put them in a plastic tub and put them in your house or maybe a garage or you could put them in a shed the main thing as long as they're dry and they're not cold. Typically you want to keep them under a heat lamp for about two to three weeks. Depending how the weather is, if it's dry and if it's not wet out, you can actually start them off on grass. And it also depends on the weather and if it's not too cold for them. We start our chickens out on grass from day one. We bring them home and we have put them in our chicken tractor. We still have the heat lamp on them and we don't move them for probably about three weeks. But they're outside, they're on the grass, and they're being active. And then over here you have the chickens that are just laying out, being lazy. <laughs> Under the heat lamp, they're just like falling asleep over here. So most of the Freedom Rangers are incredibly more active than the Cornish Cross. Now when they're baby chicks, we just make sure to keep them dry and keep them warm. Make sure they have plenty of feed and fresh water every day. 
We like to drop a little apple cider vinegar, maybe a capful into their water, uh, just to kind of boost up their immune system. Now there are a few different options for feed. You could do conventional feed, no GMO feed, organic feed, and I would say just do what works for you. No matter which one you choose, it's still 10 times as better uh, than buying at the grocery store. For 25 chickens, we go through one 50 pound bag of feed a week. So that's about seven pounds of feed a day that we feed them. So when you look at the label and looking to buy, look for either the name broiler or grower. And we use the same feed throughout their whole life. We will feed our chickens in the morning. I'll fill up this trough. All right, this feed, <laughs> so I fed them. That's a matter of probably like 20 minutes. <laughs> look how much feed, look how much feed they ate. That was filled 20 minutes ago. And I'll do that once a day. You can also feed them twice a day. I mean, they're chickens, they will eat it all. As long as they have food in front of them, they'll eat it. But, and again, you can do what you can afford. For us, we feed them once a day. It would cost us twice as much feed if we were to feed them twice a day. Um, so for us, we're trying to do this really minimal, really simple, and feeding them once a day has really worked well for us. But if you want a larger bird, then you need to feed them more. So you gotta think about that. Along with feeding them a broiler feed, we also move them out on grass every single day. The chicken tractors we use is movable. It has wheels in the back and we move them out once a day, sometimes twice a day. As we're moving them to fresh grass, they start to eat the grass and they start to fertilize the grass. All right, we move these chickens every single day in a chicken tractor. You can kind of see the squares. I mean, we started, them, we started them off in that corner over there. A lot of the grass has already grown back. And then over here, some of it's still growing. Like in this spot, it's pretty much down to the dirt. All these little tops were eaten. This spot was where I just moved them from right now. You know, I didn't believe it until I saw it. You know, I read a lot of books on how to raise chickens in this way, pasture raised, and I did not believe that they would eat grass. But after seeing them, they actually really do mow down the grass. Uh, so that's why we move them on fresh grass every single day. And so, and they're also healing the land with their fertilizer and making the grass and the soil, the pastures, making everything a lot healthier every single year. All right, so how much space do you need to raise meat chickens? To raise one round, which for us is 30 meat chickens, in a chicken tractor, moving them out once a day, sometimes twice a day, uh, you're looking at 9,800 square feet to raise 30 chickens, which is 140 feet by 70 feet. But if you feel that you don't have the space to do this, I don't want you to be discouraged about it. You do not have to move out meat chickens in a chicken tractor every day. You really could just leave them in one spot, put a fence around them, build them a chicken coop, and just leave them there. And then just feed them every single day as needed, and that should be fine. Now when we're moving the chickens in the chicken tractor, we don't go to the same spot uh, until after 90 days. That's just to give the land some kind of rest, uh, because they are putting a lot of fertilizer on the ground and if you put too much fertilizer it can actually kill the grass. We use a five gallon bucket for their water and with uh, little these little nipples down underneath and that's how they drink and that's been really clean and really beneficial for us because 30 meat chickens will go through that entire five gallon bucket of water a day. So after about two or three weeks hanging out underneath a heat lamp. We move them out onto the main pasture and we move them every single day in this chicken tractor and we feed them every morning, seven pounds of feed, and we give them fresh water in a five gallon bucket and that's pretty much it. If it's Corners Cross, it's eight weeks of moving out or the Red Rangers, it's 12 weeks of moving out every single day and really it becomes routine. We use this John Siscovich style chicken tractor where you can actually walk in. This one really works really well for us, um, but there's also other ones that you can use. It, it, it could be very simple. Uh, it could be more of like a Joel Salatin style chicken tractor, or it doesn't even need to be a chicken tractor. 
or the chicken coop can be really simple. This is a Joe Salton style chicken tractor that I just made. This holds about 10 to 15 chickens and it's really just a box. And then you can pull it. So yeah, chicken coop doesn't have, you don't have to walk into it. It could be really simple for meat chickens. You don't even have to put a roosting bar or nesting boxes because we are butchering these chickens before they actually lay eggs. All right, so after you raise these Cornish crosses for eight weeks or these Red Rangers for about 12 weeks, it's time to put them in your freezer. All right, tomorrow is butchering day for these Cornish cross chickens. Uh, they are eight weeks old now. These Freedom Rangers, we still have a few weeks on them. Because we are butchering them tomorrow, we need to restrict their feed. So no feeding them uh, today. Uh, no feeding for 24 hours before butchering because that just helps make the bird more cleaner. It's okay if they eat the grass. This is probably the most difficult to do, I think. I don't think it ever gets really that easy to do. Let's check this other one. Well, this is bigger. What? Four pounds, 12 ounces. Three pounds. Whoa. The biggest one? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> That's a turkey, Penelope. <laughs> That's a five pound Freedom Ranger. That might have been our biggest Freedom Ranger ever. When you put <laughs> all that chicken that you raised in your freezer, everything, everything that you've done to raise them would be well, well worth it. If you have a local processor where you're at, you can take chickens there. But I feel the best way to butcher chickens is to invite your community over, invite your friends. Now we're just gonna lay them on the table, let them air dry check them for feathers that can be pulled out. And then once they, pa they pass inspection, I'm just gonna move them to this table over here so that they can dry with the fan. The whole process of getting the birds to this point took us two hours. We had 30 birds and now bagging them up take about another hour, so probably a total of three hours. It seems like the more we do it every year, the faster we get at it. And the more, I guess, the more efficient that we are at it. We usually invite friends that come out. Kids are, are helping out. Uh, we're just making a whole day of it. And afterwards, buy ice cream for everybody. And we have a potluck. I will leave a playlist of videos that, that we have done. Uh, just raising chickens. We go into chicken coops. I talk about butchering equipment. I'll leave that link down in the show notes. And I promise you, when you raise that chicken for the first time, you will say, wow. That was so simple. <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you guys next time.